in three surprisingly simple steps. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Toast Hammer, where I'm finally continuing on my Imperial Knight. But before we get to the fun free handing and filigree, we have to deal with the all important underskeleton. The machiny bits that actually do the moving and shooting that knights are well known for. Now, I've painted metals before and I've talked about how I don't typically do non-metallic metal effects. Uh, on Especially on smaller models where the metal is usually not really worth it in terms of getting the effect that you want versus the time that you put into it. But what about a, a large-scale model like an Imperial Knight? Well, I still think it's not worth it. <laughs> but we're going to take a slightly different approach to true metallic metals in here to really recreate that ancient, aged, uh, heavily textured metallic look that is befitting of a 10,000-year-old machine of war. So let's get started. Now, I said there were three steps in the intro, and well, there's a hidden fourth one, which is to prime uh, your model. <laughs> I primed it in uh, gunmetal color by Vallejo, just a spray primer. Totally good enough for this effect to work. I would suggest a duller metal for this effect. You don't want a high kind of gloss, high reflective metal for more of an ancient worn look. It just wouldn't really be befitting of the final effect. So once you have all of the parts that you want to do primed, I'm going to be demonstrating on the legs here because I think they're a pretty good uh, kind of have all of the bits that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, first, you're going to mix up a bunch of different oil washes. I went kind of bananas here, <laughs> getting what you might expect with some browns and blacks and things of that nature, but also including some oddballs like magenta and blue just to represent all the sorts of different types of wear, tear, weathering, grime, and such that can afflict all sorts of functional metals, in this case, uh, sort of steel or steel-like metals. Now, why I'm choosing these sort of hot and more vibrant colors of blue and magenta is that Metal kind of can discolor in unexpected ways as different heats and other stressors are applying to that. So I just included those uh, other colors to kind of break up the monotony of just the black, brown, red types of washes that you would typically expect and to get a little bit more color variety going. Now I do want to warn that this is an extremely messy uh, process to uh, whip up all of these oil washes. So make sure you have a nice cutting mat or some other uh, decently absorbent surface for what we're about to do uh, because you're going to slop things everywhere. And make sure your table surface isn't one that you care about either. If it is, cover it up with a bunch of uh, like newspaper or something if you can somehow still get your hands on one of those. But basically what we're doing is we're taking these oil washers and we're just going all over taking a, a relatively large brush and just kind of splattering these washes here, there, and everywhere in a pretty random pattern. And we're not really taking much care with the process at this point. We're not even gonna worry about things pulling unnaturally or causing coffee stain effects or things of that nature because as we say in the biz, it's feathering. But also we can come back and correct those layers that we do think look a little bit off later in our second step of the process. So we can be really free to just kind of dabble things on randomly here or there until we get what looks like a pretty even coverage of uh, a wash kind of going everywhere. You want your entire thing to be covered in wash, but you want the specific colors to be kind of mixed up in semi-random patterns in order to get a good kind of sense of cohesiveness of weathering for the entire piece itself. The reason we're being so random about this is because that simulates real weathering a lot more effectively than if we had carefully constructed it ourselves. Nature is unpredictable. That's, that's how it works. I'd, 
I don't know what to tell you besides that. It's unpredictable. Full stop. Period. And it doesn't make a lot of sense to try and carefully calculate exactly how something would look while it's weathering through natural processes. So I just don't do it. It saves so much more time to just be slapdash about it and then fix any uh, mistakes or sort of uh, unseemly marks later on in the process. So after your washes are in a spot where they seem pretty good to you, you can let them dry and we can move on to our secret ingredient and step number two. We'll be using the chrome metal color from Vallejo. Now this is an airbrush color mix um, and we're gonna be applying it in very specific colors, not with an airbrush, but with a manual brush technique. Now this is an airbrush mix, but we are going to be applying it in very specific areas. So we will be brushing it on normally as opposed to using an airbrush for it. And we're gonna be using this metal color in order to highlight those areas which would not be receiving the same level of weathering, specifically the insides of pistons, ball joints, things of that nature which are less exposed to the outside elements, aka weather. This is going to provide a nice, shiny, very reflective metallic uh, sort of effect that will give us some really nice contrast. And this is really what's going to be selling a lot of the realistic detail in this piece. Because you're going to have those parts that should not be weathered not look weathered while the rest of it is going to look extremely weathered which makes it look much more like a functioning piece of machinery than a uh, plastic model on the tabletop so we're going to be carefully applying it to those places i mentioned before things like the insides of joints the insides of pistons things where metal would be sliding against metal in close proximity here is an example I've used for the Thunderstrike Gauntlet, which has a lot more of those similar effects, just for another example of what we're doing. We can also use this color to pick out those spots where things have maybe pooled a little bit too much in our wash stage and add that selectively in those portions to make it look like the weathering has either been cleaned away or there was some rust that has... Uh, kind of crusted away and revealed the unweathered material beneath it in the same way that you might do uh, like bullet holes in Space Marine power armor or something of that nature. Getting through the weathering and the patina back to the original finish, whether through polish or removal of material or something of that nature. And this will help even out those spots and add a nice layer of interesting contrast to all of the dull metal effects that we have established so far. By adding those punches of high reflectivity and high, well, high lights, really, uh, you can really get some nice and interesting contrast going, especially in the spots that might be more typically uh, available to be weathered and to have their uh, material removed, like the edges and corners of places or things that might be rubbing up against each other in areas like that. One caveat about using this paint though is that it, because it's an airbrush formulation, runs quite thin and can be hard to get to stick to the places that you want it to stick to. What I found useful was to kind of wipe away on a paper towel after loading your brush a little bit in order to wipe off some of the extra medium and leave more of the pigment behind. You're not supposed to be doing this for dry brushing, but in this case, we actually do want the medium to be soaked into the paper towel in order to uh, virtually thicken it up a little bit. After your uh, chrome is done and your night has been finally witnessed, there is one more final sort of coup de grace for this metallic effect to really hit home. And for that, I'm going to be using these weathering pencils, specifically the aluminum color. And we're just going to go haphazard and crazy once more with this thing, scratching all over the big flat surfaces of the mech 
to really get a nice scratched up and uh, another style of weathered texture onto the piece. And these are technically not going to be true to scale for something that is night size. They wouldn't really be visible if we're going for true to scale metal scratches on a night. Uh, but hey, they're facing big threats and also we should uh, see it because it looks cool. Uh, so we're really, again, doing this super randomly. The more random you can get with these, the better. You should try to make your lines straight. It's very rare to have a curved scratch on a metallic surface. Uh, and it's much more uh, kind of realistic to keep them straight, but they shouldn't be parallel to each other. I tried that out in some areas and it just kind of didn't look right. So they should be crisscrossing each other and going in a couple different directions. I did make sure to look up some reference images of what aged steel looks like uh, that I will display for you now to get kind of the vibe that I'm going for and that can maybe fuel your own decisions where you take your own weathering with this. But with these three steps, we come with a, out with a pretty convincing looking metallic effect, especially for something that is supposed to be old, well used and worn. Uh, the parts that are well up kept should be well up kept. They should look like they're doing things, like they're moving and capable of movement and actuation. And those other parts, those parts that are facing the elements much more frequently should look much older and worn in that respect. And this, I think, accomplishes both of those goals. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below if you found this helpful and give it a like. It always helps. How do you usually uh, handle the under skeleton of your knights? Do you just slap a wash on it and call it good? Do you spend an extra amount of effort making sure each inch of these huge models is looking perfect? And if you want to see more on my knight progress, as well as more kit bashes, lore, and memes, uh, be sure to stay subscribed so you don't miss a single one. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace!